Hello, how is it going? This is going to be an in-depth deck guide for Twisted Fate and Ezreal, teaching you all the fundamentals of the deck so that you may take it to your ladder games right now and win and eventually reach Masters. In this video, we are going to be covering the deck introduction, a card summary, and following it up with a mulligan guide. This should teach you all the fundamentals. So if you do enjoy this, if, or if you find any of the information useful, would you be kind enough to leave a like? If there's anything is not covered in the video, drop a comment. I'll respond immediately. Thank you. So Twisted Fate Ezreal is going to be a combo deck, mostly revolving around Ezreal, but of course Twisted Fate is here, so we can't deny the, the title of the deck, right? But uh, Ezreal is still going to be the late game combo aspect, similar to Karma Ezreal. They both kind of serve the similar win conditions, but unlike Karma Ezreal, this deck is really favorable. I really like it in the aggro matchups. I really like it against the mid-range decks, especially. And at the moment, some of the other decks we're picking off, uh, Noxus, etc. That's some pretty interesting tools. I can't we can't get access to in for example Ionia which would be like Riptide Rex at the moment which is finding tremendous value at the moment Riptide Rex is able to level up Ezreal instantaneously and then provide a different kind of win condition Bilgewater has some pretty cool tools uh, including the Yoink package the NAB sorry NAB package now so you know there's lots of reasons to consider this one over Karma Ezreal and this deck I prefer this one it kind of just requires you to think a little bit more and rewards a very good player right it rewards a player who likes to you know make kind of snap decisions play a certain strategy and you know using NAB every now and then can be a bit of fun probably gonna get a lot of slack for that but anyway shall we jump across and go through the full deck and we'll summarize all the cards, talk about why they're here and what they should be doing. So I just want to add quickly, I do get a fair bit of comments and questions about how I do this to the title of uh, the Runeterra decks. Uh, if you'd like to know more on that, leave a comment, I'll get back to you. I may even consider doing a video on it. So going through the list here, I just want to say one of the most noticeable differences in the current deck compared to previous versions is going to be the inclusion of Riptide Rex now. This gives you the ability to level up Ezreal simultaneously, almost in one turn. Each cannon barrage counts as a level up condition to Ezreal. So let's go into depth about Ezreal, right? So Ezreal is the win condition. Uh, he's a three mana, one three with elusive players I do not know. Uh, if you get a Nexus Strike with him on the field, you'll be able to create a fleeting Mystic Shot in hand. Although only in rare scenarios will you play Ezreal prior to him being flipped. But this deck does have the ability to consider it a lot more than Karma Ezreal. So it kind of comes down to the situation and scenario and hopefully you can make the shot call to whether or not to play it. Uh, once Ezreal levels up and we've targeted a certain amount of units, he'll start to, every time we play a spell, deal two to the enemy Nexus. You may have seen this happen to you in the past or more recently. This kind of what gives him like the ultimate win condition, the ultimate like combo deck. So you'll play a bunch of spells alongside him and it can be quite oppressive with burst spells. Cards like Warning Shot or even Pilfered Goods, for example, can actually allow you to get those procs off without being countered. Going down the list, we're going to have Yodel Grifter going alongside with the NAB package and being generally quite a strong uh, unit. You'll get the guaranteed warning shot and you'll sometimes have odds of uh, nabbing one from your opponent. A uh, very good card. It's a very good Bilgewater card because Bilgewater is kind of a very strict region. Uh, if you're going into Bilgewater, you're going to run a lot of the same cards until future expansions come out. Twist of Fate is going to be the other card that's featured in this list. Very good utility card. There's a lot going on here, guys. But basically, once you play him, you get to pick a destiny card. You get to play a blue card if you like. Refill one spell mana, draw one. I just want to add this is probably going to be your go-to one. Except for the rare case scenarios where you desperately need to clear your opponent's board or stop your opponent from smacking you with a big unit with the gold card. This also counts as a level up condition for Ezreal. But a lot of the time you're going to find blue card to be the most effective and then you kind of ask yourself why would you play a four mana a four mana card just to draw one card right well because it has the flexible options this is kind of like a three mana because you get the spell mana back and for the chance that he levels up you know it could be an alternate win condition the fact that he's super flexible makes him a great utility option it could be a very good consideration for decks like this also, if you have multiple Twisted Fates, you will get access to Twisted Fates Pick a Card, which oftentimes can be a great consideration because you're not very often going to actually level up Twisted Fate. Is this there for utility? So if you ever get an opportunity to consider playing Twisted Fates Pick a Card alongside two, two Twisted Fates, sorry, definitely consider it. Look at your hand state, consider what your options are, and maybe this is the right play to make. Continuing on, 
Static Shock helps to level up Ezreal with two shots. Uh, pretty good PNZ utility tool, fits into a lot of decks like this. Uh, anything with like Ezreal, probably gonna run Static Shock. Petty Officer recently got buffed, but still would have been a great consideration prior to it. When you play him, he's going to summon a Powder Keg or a random one cost follower. A lot of the times you'll probably uh, resort or default to the random one cost follower, but there will be rare, sorry, there will be rare case scenarios with a keg. Well, no, not even rare case scenarios, but there will be situations where you might consider the keg for buffing your spells. Pilfered Goods, we'll talk about this in conjunction with a Black Market Merchant. Uh, these two cards kind of go together and you usually want to play Pilfered Goods above the Merchant. Merchant is a 2 mana 2-1. Uh, if you've plundered, by the way, so plunder is when a card triggers its plunder ability when you've damaged the enemy Nexus this round, you'll be able to nab one and you also get a reduction on it, by the way. So when you draw an enemy card, reduces cost by one. Not just for Black Market Merchant, but any card that draws. So Pilfered Goods, uh, if you've plundered, you better nab one more. Without Plunder, you'll nab one. So you, uh, you, you look for the nab with this. You look for the Plunder and you nab two cards. Playing alongside Merchant is really oppressive. Also, Yodel Grifter counts as a nab effect, so you can sometimes get discounts there. As I said though, the Warning Shot's the main usefulness of this card. Mystic Shot is pretty much a default PNZ card uh, for a lot of PNZ lists. Deal two to anything. I think that's enough said. You use it, for, use it for the early game against aggro, use it for the late game against control for more face damage. Um, make it rain is kind of like one of the other reasons why we consider bilge water a lot with Ezreal. Deal one three times among three different randomly selected enemies, including the Nexus. Um, if you play this against the wide board, that's three procs on your Ezreal, and it's really good against clearing aggro decks. Kempunk Pickpocket, this is one of the recent additions I've been making. Uh, it's I'm choosing this over the Dreadway Deckhands because this card strictly feels a lot better. And Dreadway Deckhead I mentioned in the past is kind of like one of the weak cards in this list. Kempunk, Kempunk Pickpocket is a bit of a threat. And next to Strike will create a card in hand from your opponent's deck. It'll be a random spell. So that's pretty cool as well. And it's a 3-2 body helps against one of the most impressive cards at the moment, Crimson Disciple. You can trade off into it, definitely. Jagged Butcher, Plunder, grab me one, one, uh, plus one, plus one, becomes a one mana three, three. Most of the time, we just want the one mana two, two. Uh, we just play it turn one. So don't like look to try and force a warning shot into Jagged Butcher. Never really keep warning shots in the opening hand unless you have some crazy hand like Merchant, Pilfered Goods, and Warning Shop. We'll talk more about the Mulligan in a sec. Jugger Butcher, 1 mana 2 2, pretty standard. And Thermo Beam is a very flexible PNC, auto include in a lot of decks at the moment. Uh, you'll be able to play this, spend all your mana to deal that much to a unit. This is like one of your only ways to deal with big units outside of Twisted Fate stunning them. So this is going to be very important resource to consider. Let's jump over to the Mulligan Guide. So firstly, I'd like to show you an example of some really strong opening hands. Cards like, uh, let's say for example, like a Jagged Butcher, Mystic Shot, Black Market Merchant, Pilfered Goods. This looks like a pretty good hand all around in most matchups. And uh, first, uh, another thing I'd like to add, Twist of Fate most of the time will be an auto keep in your opening mulligan. It's just one of your most flexible utility uh, tools that you can keep. And it's just one of the biggest threats for your opponent to deal with early. Never keep Ezreal. I'll show you another example of a hand that you might consider. Jagged Butcher, Ken Pock, Pickpocket, Petty Officer, Yodel Grifter. Decent curve all around, very good considerable keep, but it will depend on the matchup. Let's say you're versing an aggressive deck. You know you're versing an aggressive deck, you'll probably consider maybe dropping the Petty Officer and the Yodel Grifter and trying to pick up cards like Mystic Shot and Make It Rain, or even Thermo Beam is going to be really useful against dealing with the Crimson Disciple. But these are little niches you can do. You might consider just keeping that hand anyway. It depends strictly on what list they are running. Here's another example of a hand I'd definitely just keep all around. Warning Shot, Jagged Butcher, Thermo Beam, Make It Rain. Most matchups is going to be useful. You might kick the Make It Rain against Control, but you're going to like burn out your hand early, but it's still quite a powerful opener and definitely a considerable keep. So look, in general, 
Definitely just keep a curve. Uh, most matchups, you still want to be curving out against control or aggro. But more, more importantly, against aggro, you do desperately need those early drops like Mystic Shot, like Jagged Butcher, stuff that can contest the board. Thermo Beam is going to be great in most matchups as well against slow or fast. It helps you to deal with the mid range threats, uh, especially like against Heimerdinger. You're going to be able to clear the elusive units, or it gives you a good guaranteed way of clearing Heimerdinger most of the time. Uh, because if you have a certain amount of mana banked up, they can't protect them too much outside of that range. Kazi will never keep, never keep Riptide Rex, uh, probably never keep Ezreal. I can't think of matchups where it's super relevant. Even if it's going to be that slow of a matchup, you're probably going to draw into it anyway, and you don't really want to play it against slow decks anyway. You might just keep it against aggressive decks if you're trying to look for a specific curve, like if you have like a Jagger Butcher, Ken Punk, and Ezreal. Might keep it because you're probably still going to play it. Don't hesitate to play Ezreal against aggro decks as a cheap blocker or a bit of a threat. Against aggro decks, it's not going to matter. You're going to beat them with the Riptide Rex if you get there anyway. Twist of Fate, I uh, usually keep that. One exception is that against aggro decks, if you ha if haven't already got a cheap enough hand, don't keep it. If you've got a curve, keep it. So let's say, for example, you've got like Static Shock, Petty Officer, Yorta Grifter, and Twist of Fate. Probably kick the entire hand. We want to get cheaper, right? Against Control, you might consider keeping a hand like that. But generally, like at that point, you probably just consider kicking some of the expensive cards, keep Twist of Fate, and look for the cheaper units. Uh, any other niches I can think of, I didn't mention it before, but I think if you have like Double Pill for Goods, Black Market Merchant, and like a Warning Shot, go for it. <laughs> That's a wild hand. I think that's just too much fun to let go and you obviously have to skip the first few turns so it's very out there kind of thing but if you ever do find a hand like that give it a go you're probably going to blow your opponent out and tilt them to the end of the earth that's a general guide guys i can't really think of anything more else to say the deck plays kind of like you just react to your opponent's cards you play your cards you get to riptide rex you play it you threaten your opponent there's lots of niche scenarios that i'd hope that you can figure out as you go along and figure it out but to keep it nice and simple look to level up ezreal look to hold back some spells if you can and just kind of play for the tempo right play for the aggression sometimes burn your opponent down very fun deck highly recommend it tons of fun guys Tons of fun. Hey, you made it. Why don't you go check out some other videos? So I'm trying to think of a new end screen. I just want to say you would not believe how many times I have to retake some of this footage. Even this pranking end screen. This is my fourth time recording it because I keep on slurring my words. This is supposed to be a joke. I'm retaking it. <laughs>